Hello and welcome to the Media Review segment. Joining me here today to discuss issues in the news and how they have been reported is Simon Imobo Twam, the CEO of Dew Communications, Dew Citizens Communications Limited. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very it's much. It's good to have you once again. Thank you. Let's start with this report from the Nigerian Tribune as reported Wednesday, 11th June. It says Sanusi operates from Kanu Government House, Emmer's Palace under tight security. Now let's just look at the general media coverage of Sanusi's appointment as the Emir of Kanu. Do you think, what do you think, what were your thoughts about it when the news first broke? Do you think that there was a balanced coverage in the media about his appointment? Uh, yes, I will say by and large, it was balanced. You know, given his late, his, his late history, his removal from office, the altercation with government, going to court, the suits and counter suits, and then suddenly the Emir dying, and then he's emerging. Uh, you know, it was an interesting development, and the, and, and the media, both print and social, the mainstream and the social media, seized upon it. And so I would say it was very well reported, especially if you look at, just before he was announced, the PDP had in error sent a message congratulating another aspirant, another contender for the throne. You know, but as it were, when Sanusi, Lamedo Sanusi was announced by the Kano State Government, the PDP had to issue another statement, another statement withdrawing a, a one they had sent to, they had sent to a, uh, another contestant. But it was reported, and the media took time to explain that this one was sent before, was sent in error before the emergence of Sanusi. So I think by and large from other sides, it was very well reported by the media, by the media from the contenders, the Kano State government, outside press and everything. But there was a lot of reports that were tilted to a particular side uh, of these different parties involved, Kwan Kaso, the president, and Sanusi. Mm. You know, some said, some reported that Kwan Kaso said the president was trying to, was looking out to you know, kill him. He, he set up the riots that happened after the appointment of, of the new Emir. What do you think about what are your thoughts about this report on the media about this issue? Well, my thoughts may not be so important. We'll, we'll go with what, what was reported. You know, the media is a marketplace of ideas. This one says that it's reported. This party says that it's reported. So it's a melting pot. So when you hear the old sides, when they are giving ample expression, the public can so now read the public to, and to decide and use and their decide discretion. And, no, the public can cannot be, can now read and, and decide. PDP issued a statement prior to the announcement of Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi. The, the party said it was in error. People cannot decide. Was it in error? Now, up to now, as we speak, there are pockets of protests in Kano, which, which have prevented the emir, the new emir, from, from entering the palace. Now, the Kano state government says, these are calibrated, calculated, orchestrated by government. Now, if you look at the politics of it, the governor is from the river APC. The federal government is from the river PDP. Now, people can now read and judge who is speaking the truth between these issues. Now, I am aware that upon his emergence, APC governors like uh, Rotimi Amechi, some of them were in Kano to solidarize with the new emir. Now, when he was removed from office, you will see the same politics playing out. Parties went to welcome him at the airport, to sympathize with him, giving it, uh, giving, making him uh, receive, as he was on the side of APC, or rather that APC were in support of uh, him against the government. So as it is now, APC governors were in town, APC members were in town to solidarize with him and the state governor. So people can decide to say, okay, perhaps after all, this man has some sympathy of the APC, Government can decide to say, okay, if the man has support of the APC, perhaps it's an APC sympathizer, but that's left for the public to decide. So when when Kano says uh, they want to kill me, of course the, the federal government says it is not true. But again, as I say, the public can judge. So from what you're saying now, it's possible that politics of things may have stained certain reportage no, no, by the yes, media. Yes, definitely. Politics has stained, in short, it has, not just it, has colored it. It has colored it. Uh, so it's difficult for you to read the story of the, of the Sanusi's Sanusi emergence at Emir with all the police out of. You have to read it with politics 
not just the background, in the foreground. Uh, everything is politicized. So when someone says this, you have to look at it in the context of who is speaking, where is coming from, where is this going. That is very important. Uh, very let's, important. Let's uh, move on to the next story now. Uh, That's reported in Sunday Punch, June 8th. It says, Jonathan's war against media enters second day. Soldiers seize papers, detain drivers, presidency justifies military action. This is one side of the story. Yes. Sunday Sun reported also, June 8th, it said, we would not tamper with press freedom, mm -hmm. says Opupe, who is a special assistant on publicity affairs. Mm -hmm. And he said specifically that the, the, the government will neither engage in nor encourage any acts that will constitute an assault on any media organization or infringe on freedom of the press. Mm. What are your thoughts about these are two sides? Mm. You know, the, the government has said that it's not involved in this. And also the military has said they will continue to impound and the newspapers of this country until they are very sure that they are not involved in carrying arms and ammunition to insurgents. Do you think that there is any link between protecting, you know, the public from from harm of, the, of Boko Haram and all of that? Do you think there's any link between that and the and and the uh, insurgents? A, a little, it, it's a loaded question. I think. When you started, I got you, but midway, I lost you. It's so loaded, so I think I'll start from where I can, where I can still follow. Okay. You know, God, there seems to be a disconnect between what government is saying and what we in the media, we are seeing on the streets. Government say we will not tamper with press freedom. But in the media, we are seeing the tampering. When we impound a vehicle carrying newspapers, that is tampering. So there's a disconnect between what we are hearing and what we are seeing. And uh, seriously, in spite of, no, I am in support of, in support of what government is doing about bringing back security into the country. Because it's terrible. You see, but in the attempt to guarantee national security, government should not go to the state of taking away the security that we already, that the one that we are still left, which is the free, which is the security of free speech, the security to hear and disseminate information. So it's I don't I don't I don't can't get it because now there's another element. Government said they won't tamper. We see them tampering. And then the military which is directly involved says we will continue. So where do we listen? Government assures us that no, we won't do it. But the people tampering say we will. So it's a it's a it's a little bit dicey. I don't know the, the, the details but it's worrisome. No, when you ask if there's a link between national security and uh, press freedom, did I get you? Yes, in a democratic, you know, society such as yes. Nigeria, what, yes. is, is is there a link between that? Yes, there, there's a link between security and democracy. Because well, democracy, not only in Nigeria, everywhere, it's about openness, it's about transparency, it's about open governance. So when security gets so tight, so choking to the extent of choking the freedom of speech, the freedom of information, then it is not only choking press freedom, it is also choking democracy. Now, we appreciate that these are dangerous times. These are strange times. These are not easy times for the government, for the military and security agencies. We are fighting an enemy that doesn't wear uniforms, doesn't wear badges, doesn't carry weapons openly. So it's difficult for government or the agents fighting uh, terror to know who is who. But in the attempt to stamp out terror, we have to be careful so that we don't also stamp out the goodwill in the system. Because as government says and all of us believe, fighting terror and crime generally is the, beauty, is the duty of everybody. So for government to win the war on terror and crime, it needs the support and goodwill of the community. So if government or agents of government turn themselves into agents of terror, you can't use terror to fight terror, at least not when you are terrorizing people from whom you want the good way to fight the terror. Thank and you. Uh, sorry, just, just before I end, these are terrible times. And I will say government, the, the military itself cannot turn into media hunters. They have a lot of things to hunt. 
so it's very important. As the hunting terror, let, let, let them understand that the media is not part of the terror. Thank you very much, yes. Simon. You very it's, much. it's been great having you on the show today. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you've had it insightful with Simon and I. See you next time. I am Anita on KDG.